All right, so today is a big day. I think I'm pretty much close to the final uh, part of my build. Uh, again, for those just joining us, here we are with uh, my tribute build to the BBC Toy Oda uh, slash Toy Boda slash Car Boat Challenge on Top Gear from back in the day. Uh, I figured for our one billion view celebration total video views on YouTube, we should do some sort of epic project, and it seems that that the toy boda has definitely turned into just that. Now in the last video I left you with the cable driven steering for the uh, back boat motor here uh, all hooked up but what you guys didn't know is that I still wanted to put in a helm. Now I kind of hinted at that with the captain's wheel uh, words that came up in the last uh, video but here is one of the pieces that I needed to fabricate uh, off camera. I could have done it on camera as well but I've been dying to to do this build but I wanted to show you guys as much as possible but for those that are saying the build's getting too long for them well I try to do my best for all you guys so here we go one piece that's already built this is a pass-through if you actually have a real close look you can see that there's a hole drilled right in the middle how I did that was to drill a larger hole put a large nut in there and then on either side uh, silicone uh, uh, another nut <laughs> pretty nutty <laughs> The reason I've done this is that I wanted to have something for this cable driven steering uh, to actually have the wires come together uh, before it went into the aluminum tube I have here in the seat going out to the you know overpowered oversized outboard motor we have on the back. Plus I also wanted something for my driver because I want to have a servo driven steering wheel right here. I wish I could find a captain's wheel but I don't have one. So here's a steering wheel for a 1 tenth scale uh, trail truck. With a servo uh, mounted up on the back, I should be able to harness it into the servo that's driving the steering for this on the back, uh, the outboard motor, and if they have it working together, awesome, because then I can have dun 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 dun, dun. Everyone's been saying here I needed to find a, a mini Jeremy Clarkson, but everybody may forget, some folks may forget, Capo actually did a one-off uh, DJ Medic, RC Sparks, right there. So I figured since it's our tribute to to, uh, BBC and I built the truck I might as well pilot it as well right so why not so here we go with the seat on the back this is where and why I wanted to have him back here because you have to have a driver for a toy boda uh, this the way it is shaped is going to be drilled into the back tray or into the back bed then these cables right here are going to slide right through the middle right through the seat and into the back horn but what or into the back uh, steering horn for the outboard what i need to figure out is proper height because my little guy's arms move here right they're going to be able to move with that steering wheel and so if i had the steering wheel roughly here right that would work All right, the servo I'm gonna use uh, for my steering wheel is just gonna be a tiny one, but I'm gonna make sure it's waterproof. Uh, I got this down at my local hobby store, Action Hobby. I try to go down and support my local hobby stores as much as I can, uh, especially living in an online world. Anything that they don't have or they can't order in, you know, like within a week or two and I can get it online, I'll get it there. But if I can get down to a local hobby shop, I do. Since the driver is sitting farther away, where is his final resting position going to be? Now just off to the side, I've got this little piece of plastic here. It's just scrap that I use off of the, off of the tray and, and off of the chassis. But it's almost the perfect height to slide in to where I can have a screw mount here. Bought a new grinder the other day. The other one was getting pretty old and toasted. Straight through. Yeah, right about there. 
thread the screw all the way through, which looks fine, in my opinion. <laughs> and then I'm slowly being very, very careful with these uh, Traxxas servos. Just going to thread the screw into the actual servo horn mount. Now the reason I said I'm being careful with it is because these are plastic gears on the inside and I've seen under stress they can snap pretty easily so I never try to force those gears back and forth. But there you go. That is exactly how I would do a uh, servo mounted steering wheel. Now I could get in here and paint it black and I'm sure in the end I will but really I don't want this to look like super clean cut. The Toy Boda original uh, and the Nissan you know both both of them were kind of rugged trucks and this one's turning out to be pretty nice which is fine <laughs> as a tribute truck um, but you know a little a little roughness around the edges I think is what I'm after and oh all of us just checked our phones to see who got a text <laughs> now I will be using a nut on the other side just to make sure that uh, all of this stays attached <laughs> don't want to be running through the water and how all of a sudden have it just kind of disappear and just cinch down the other side. Now a lot of these parts that I'm using are spare parts I've just collected over the years. You know, the parts tray, the nuts, the screws, everything. Um, you know, if you save your stuff, if you're in the hobby long enough uh, and you save the stuff that's necessary and get rid of the stuff that you don't really think you're going to need in the future, well then you're always kind of prepared. So not too tight as I don't want to crack the actual uh, truck bed itself. But I am going to want to seal this up with some uh, shoe goo or some sort of silicone just so I don't have any leaks coming through the holes. Okay, here's that silicone. Just making sure that it's all sealed up. I don't want any water being forced through the tray uh, while it's floating on the water. I'd rather, you know, if it's going to get water in the back, I'd rather it was from splashing instead of leaking. Just get all these wires out of the way for a moment so we can run these cables through the part I just made. Then I have to run it through the seat tube again and then into the proper sheathing here for wire control. I think that's exactly where I'm going to run into the problem is getting this wire restrung into the proper tubing on the other side. Threading it through, there we go. Very nice. I'll get the water cooling out of the way. Putting the cable through the control horn like that. Now I think, now you can see all the cables for the cable driven steering are out of the way, the way it should be done. Yeah, I hope this works. <laughs> Either way, it's pretty cool to look at. Um, I've never actually built a boat before, uh, let alone a truck boat, but I've operated a lot of boats. I've got zero engineering design skills uh, from school, of course. This is all just, you know, this could be a spectacular fail or a spectacular win. I think it's a spectacular win either way just because this is so much fun. Um, let's see, so I'll put the cable stops on next. Right, that would be the secret. Let's do it this way. Now before I tighten up anything too much, I still have to do uh, the radio conversion, which isn't gonna take very long. Um, but still important because I have to set my servos where they're going to be. So these cable stops will have to be adjusted uh, as I adjust the pulley on, on the uh, front steering servo right here, right? So I'll have to, once it's, once it's hooked up, I'll have to center it. All right, so there we go. The truck is, uh, I just placed the body on top of the chassis so we could get a good reward for all the work we just did to have a look inside to see how everything is hooked up. Now, for those that have noticed, yes, I have installed a nice bright, that'll actually be a white uh, LED low current uh, um, light bar on the top because I think some nighttime driving will be cool if this works out uh, as well 
as uh, just being lit up on a truck like this would look pretty darn neat. Uh, so in the back, you can see now, I've got three plugs left over. One for the ESC that I'll be running the motor back here. One for the steering wheel and one for the steering uh, for the cables, right? So it's going back and pulling on either side there. Even though I have three cables here, one of them is going to be put into, uh, or pardon me, two of them are gonna be put into one wide juncture, which will come out as just one uh, channel that I'll need on the radio. The other one is for the ESC. Now the inside here, I also have three channels that I need to run. One for the ESC, one for the steering, and of course one for the uh, transmission uh, shifting because it's got a two-stage transmission high and low so <laughs> next I got to get into swapping out the radio but I just wanted to get a, a nice up-close look kind of a, a good reward for you guys to see uh, what was just done right that was quite a bit of work to get done there the cable system is clearing the three cell battery I have in there going through the helm going through the seat and of course into the back steering horn right here, which will move back and forth, is the plan. All right here, let's remove the body, which is actually quite heavy. <laughs> Been wondering about that too. I'm gonna have to do another float uh, test just to see if we can actually float it. Okay, so with the body off, you can see here, uh, I'm actually running just your run-of-the-mill everyday uh, uh, Spectrum 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Uh, this is the SR410 four-channel receiver, uh, really built for trail trucks. When I built this truck as a truck, uh, I used this. It's very, very easy, waterproof. It has Relia coat on it, uh, which is a waterproofing coat, basically like a conformal coating. I think it might be something else. Uh, but you can get it wet and there's no problem. Uh, unfortunately, not enough channels for me to run everything I want. So I'm going to be switching over to a dual stick. Uh, uh, I have an older DX18. In fact, it's just on the other table there. But I will be running a flight uh, uh, receiver if possible. We'll see how the reception is. I think it should be okay as long as I'm running this part up and out of the water. This is also covered in Relia coat and gives me six channels uh, for me to, to fiddle around with and I think that's going to be just enough for what I need. So all right, so what you're seeing here now, I figured I'd kind of tune you guys in, um, is I'm taking the receiver from back here and relocating it to a part of the vehicle that won't be, or supposed to be not underwater all the time. The back of the vehicle will always be underwater, so for better reception to the radio, I think, um, I already had a section cut out here um, that I can actually just stuff the receiver into the foam and run the antenna up out of the water properly. And I'm just putting some split loom over the wires here to give it a more finished, cleaner look. All right, now I have to make a hole in the body to actually have these wires come down through to connect to the receiver. There is the hole. What a crazy video and what a maniac wiring system this is. It's really not too bad if you understand how it goes, but it's quite confusing even if I explain it to you. Uh, but I'll do my very best. You see this battery right here? This is a complete separate connection without anything to do with the radio. This is for the light bar. So for on and off, I just plug it in and out and it's very small, very light and fits right here on the chassis itself. Now to get into the radio functions okay let's remember I have two sticks one on this side and one on this side I'm basically controlling the truck on this side I believe I haven't turned it on and tested anything but the truck uh, bottom on this side and then the boat section on this side so technically if I push forward this should actually make the prop on the back of the engine spin and the whole truck should move forward in the water if I moved left and right technically the motor should move left and right now this stick here will independently control the wheels this will be forward and of course backwards and left and right when I'm turning up front now I still have to set up the switch for my uh, shifting transmission right 
here. There we go. So uh, hopefully that was easy to understand. This is the battery that actually runs this part of the truck uh, and uh, the battery that will be running the motor section for the boat actually goes right here. So everything should fit together. I did put a lot of uh, servo extension leads on this. So if I needed to remove the whole lid, uh, I can do that and just unplug everything. And then I'm gonna stick this up into there. The problem is, is I have a lot of moving parts and gears. So I'm gonna have to figure out either I wrap this all together in electrical tape, which is probably what I'll do, um, or find some sort of bigger sheathing. But I don't think I have any right now. All right, let's get you in there close so you can see. Basically, I've got all the wires nice, tight together, and uh, <laughs> just simple electrical tape. Now, it will be a pain, of course, if I need to change anything out, but like I mentioned, I did put in a lot of servo extension wires, so I can just unplug them down here. But uh, Regardless, now I can tuck it up and away, have the antenna come up through the hood. Also, all the wires are very tidy and clean. Don't have anything really hanging out except for a few battery wires. Nothing's touching the drive shafts or, or any kind of moving part. There we go. <laughs> all right, so we've all been waiting for this moment. Let's see how many things I have to change. Cross your fingers. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm gonna have another battery to uh, plug in up here. So put this up where it's supposed to be. Shift, whoa, shift. I'm glad to see that move. Shift the uh, center of gravity here. See how the camera is for you? Good, you can still see everything. Now, I do not have anything mounted, but we can kind of see it's individualized. Let's get another battery here. This is gonna be for the top. I'm just gonna put it off to the side. This is gonna to be to actually run the motor itself on the back. Separate ESC firing up. Okay, so that should be it. Now let's see, on the radio, like I said, I have the truck set up on this side and the boat set up on this side. Number one, here we go, throttle forward. Okay, so throttle is this one. If I wanted to go in reverse. And my transmission shifting is here. Okay, uh, on the back, <laughs> I'm very, this is nerve wracking. So left and right. Oh, my steering to my front isn't working. So my steering here needs to, I need to check that out. Back cable driven steering back here. This should be left and right. Awesome. And I noticed that this steering wheel is turning the wrong way. The boat motor is turning the right way, but the steering wheel is the wrong way. I'm gonna have to get a servo, darn it. I'm gonna need a servo reversing cable on this one right here because I cannot reverse this one individually. I did fix the, uh, the motor and the steering. As you can see, all I had to do was switch around these cables. So I just had to cross the streams, if you will, cross the cables in this sheathing right here and it totally made it the right way. <laughs> but there we go, guys, we did it. Thumbs up, we got things moving. Takes a long time to get something like this together. I know we're all excited for me to get this outside and actually out on the water to see if it's just gonna sink like a stone anyway. <laughs> you know, but I got it. If I'm gonna do it, I wanna make sure to do it right. Okay, so out of the way, I gotta check what's wrong with the actual steering servo. I must have accidentally pulled it apart when I was doing the electrical tape.
I got the propeller off. Let's have a look inside here. Make sure that we got enough grease uh, down the prop shaft itself. Let's get some more grease in there. Even for a small boat like this, I want to make sure to have enough uh, grease on the prop shaft itself. Uh, or I'm going to have an issue, right? Like, it's not like I'm going to be running full bore. <laughs> the whole goal is to be able to putter across the pond that I have nearby here. And, uh, you know, just have a good time. But even with that, I still have to worry about friction and heat issues here. So that's what I'm trying to negate. Uh, I'm using uh, Cow RC's Utter Butter, which is super waterproof grease. Uh, I've used it for years, so I, uh, it's a product that I trust, so there you go. Okay. In. Everything should work. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, I don't know if that's the right pitch uh, for the prop. I'm going to have to check. But feels good. Now here's the part I'm struggling with, and I've been thinking about this for quite some time. Here is a clamp I actually have, uh, which was uh, one of the extra clamps for a mirror on my Polaris Razor. As you can see, I've got the pontoon ready here, sealed on both sides. Uh, I even have foam on the inside, just in case we get a crack or a broken seal like that somewhere out on a journey, we won't actually start taking on too much water. Now the thing is, is I'd actually like it to be adjustable, right? because I can be deflecting water off of the front or I can be giving it lift off of the front depending but also I need to do a test uh, I know you guys are so eager for me to get out and start running this thing but I need to do a proper flotation test to find out exactly what angle this needs to be at now ideally what I'm going to do is build a, a an extra plate on the back if we have enough flotation so I can actually do an adjustable float uh, depending on on, you know what the weather is like how the water is is it wavy you know and where does the the rear end of this truck right now sit as is so I think what I'm gonna do is temporarily put these on uh, and head out to do a flotation test and that's about all we can do for today but at least we have our build basically completed for position drilling Ah, oh, here it is, the end of the day. I've been working all day. It's about 5.30, and I thought I would do a flotation test, but I have one thing that's holding me back, and it's these screw holes right here, right? Because I had to uh, mount up these uh, uh, stabilizers here, and I had to create the holes, and I'd like to seal those up on the back, um, and I know you guys are so eager for me just to even get this in the water and fire it up, but I gotta tell you, I wanna make sure everything is good first but what do you think my friends are you still with me on this project pretty darn crazy hey here's the antenna uh, from the uh, receiver which is right underneath the body is now attached I have everything basically in the spot that I want them to be in. I am able to adjust these either up or down a little bit for the moment. Plus I can also uh, turn these and have them deflecting or lifting. At the moment it's providing lift. Uh, so we'll have to make sure that the holes are right here. There's no way for me to know other than to go down there and to stick it in the water. And you know what, instead of complaining about it, because now you guys understand why I can't run it yet, Let's go down and actually float it and see how it does. 
Hey, Jem. Morris, can you come help me do a float and see if this thing even floats or if it just sinks to the bottom? Dad, look at this. Uh, I'm doing a scale jump right now. So oh, what are we doing? A scale jump. Oh, awesome. So Hot when, wheels. It can come with you yeah. when we're done. When we're done, okay. Yeah. You just have to press well, the eject button and then we're good. Then I'll wait. Yeah, no problem. Got it how all about, in position, waiting. Uh, how about I we bring those all to a pond? Yeah, I don't want to jump your little car into the pond. We'll lose it for sure, bro. And that means you only have 1,700 cars left. <laughs> Ready? Good luck! Whoa! Down it went. No, let's do this one real quick. Good jump, man. You do another one for sure. Hard to see. Let me back up. Ready? Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Cows, maybe. Mm, no. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put in one screw. I have to go all the way back for one screw. Well, we'll just wait here for you. It'll be like a Monty Python skit. Yeah. Okay. Cut it out. Can I ask you a couple questions? Yes. Okay, are you excited to see this toy boda? Yeah! Can you say thanks YouTube audience for tuning in for a billion views? For a billion views? Yeah, <laughs> billion is a tough word. I gotcha. We're pretty excited. He's been working non-stop on this truck for what, like a long time now. Well, not long, that long, but I guess in an internet world, it's a pretty long time. I'm running like someone who has a back injury. Pretty good form! Okay, putting in the final screw. Yeah. So the purpose of this test is to put all of... I lost the screw, you're kidding me. <laughs> I lost the screw on the way back. It fell out. Screw! Ah! <laughs> you... Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's actually worked in an entire walk back, uh -huh. a saunter. I would have had to have gone all the way back for nothing. A search party saunter. That's okay. Right. Oh, right. He's gonna put his hoodie hood on. Right. Wow! Look how much. Uh, look how much debris is in there. Yeah. Mom. Harvest time. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. There's lots of lots of stuff in the canal. Yeah. Stuck in a prop. It's been windy, man. That's why I'm going to want to do uh, the maiden voyage in the pond. Right. Come on down. I want to make sure you're safe. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to pull the hood on. You're going to put the hood on? Well, yeah, he doesn't so want him to get wet. Get oh, good idea. <laughs> Thank you very much. He's a very considerate lad. Okay. Yeah, no, let's go. Okay. So, good luck. This good is, luck. This is where we find out if it's going to float and I need to change these stabilizers or not. <sighs> the big moment. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love buoyancy. Okay, I already have water coming in through um, just where I haven't sealed up uh, for the wires of the steering servo. Okay. But I think we're, I think we're possibly there. We're I, a step closer. Oh yeah, no, like that is... Floatable. I'm very <laughs> excited about this. Is floatable a word? We did it! We're gonna do it! Okay, so I gotta seal up the holes, okay. everything there. Uh, obviously the flotation works. High five, low fives. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Good job, Knuckles. Fives, five, Knuckles. Sorry, sorry, Knuckles. I'm, a, I'm excited, I'm excited. Okay, let's go get her dried off. Next video, we get to do Maiden Voyage of the Toy nice. Boda. Okay. Now, we can take his hood down now. He's open, he's, he's okay now. Yeah, he can take let, it down. Let, let's try. Okay, yeah. hey, seal it up. See you in the next episode. Join us. We want to see if it's going to win or fail spectacularly either way. Toy Boda! Nice.